This is the Mulligan Stew Podcast. I'm Terry David Mulligan. Nice to have you here. I think we're, well, we're at episode 180 or, yeah, 180, 181, somewhere around there. We're getting close to 200. Not quite sure what we're going to do with that 200. I can tell you what's coming up. Colin James, next week on the podcast, has a new album called Open Road. It's his 20th, and he has achieved liftoff with this album. You can just tell. It's going to do amazing things for him around the world. And then in two weeks, Miami Steve Van Zant. He has a new book, but he has a life lived as the wingman for Bruce Springsteen. They grew up together in New Jersey, and they have been together ever since, off and on. It's an amazing book. I'll tell you all about it as we approach. Miami Steve Van Zant. Maybe the longest interview we've done in two weeks on the Mulligan Soup Podcast. Mike McDonald has always been at the core of Junior Gone Wild, Edmonton Band. He formed Junior Gone Wild in 1983. They broke up in 95, and they disbanded in 2013. But he was the constant. The albums were less art, more pop, Folk You, the Guido Sessions, Too Dumb to Quit, and then 1992's, I love this, Pull the Goalie. The final album was Simple Little Wish. There were The last three albums actually were on Stony Plain Records. They have not been forgotten. They come up in discussions about where alt-country came from. And basically, they were a punk band that slid into the country music field, but kept their punk leanings, their roots, as it were. And lots of bands out there are doing it today. But Junior Gone Wild helped to kick the entire alt-country Americana roots music movement off. And uh, and they've released this new album called Still Got the Jacket. (laughs) It's really good, man. It's really good. And they're going to be doing some dates. He'll tell you all about it. Here's a conversation. And four tracks from Junior Gone Wild. And this album, Still Got the Jacket. We're going to play a Dodge, Behind the Wheel, Fly at Night, the great Bill Henderson song for Chilliwack, and Girl in the Crowd. Enjoy. I'm Terry David Mulligan. This is Mulligan Stew, CKUA Radio, and the Mulligan Stew Podcast. Mike McDonald's on the line from Junior Gone Wild. I love that. That's the best line I've done all week. Mike McDonald is here (laughs) from Junior Gone Wild, is on the phone. Welcome back to um, uh, Old School Phoner Radio. Thank you. I was trying to go back over the uh, timeline, Mike, uh, with Junior and you guys get, gathering, getting together. I know that 1983 was kind of like the starting point. That was the starting line. So Pretty much. If that's the case, then you're approaching 40 years together? Well, we took 18 years off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Inside of that 40 years. <clears throat> Yeah, we got back together about nine years ago, 2013, and uh, it had been uh, an 18-year break. <laughs> Who? Uh, what did you do with your 18 years? I tried a couple other bands, got a couple records made. Nothing really uh, uh, big came of it. And then uh, my wife and I started having kids and uh, got all domestic for a while. And then suddenly Junior Gone Wild got back together and my life went into chaos. How suddenly? What happened? Was it overnight? I was uh, working in a record store, minding my own business, and a guy came in and asked if I'd put Junior back together, and I immediately said, well, no, why would I do that? But then he kept uh, bugging me about it. I didn't want to do it, so I started uh, telling him it would cost an awful lot of money. <laughs> and he goes, how much? And he finally, uh, I named a figure I thought would uh, <laughs> end the thing, but he went for it. And I went, oh, you got to be kidding. Okay, we'll do it then. <laughs> so what was in it for him i'm not sure uh he was a local promoter i think he just wanted to do this show and how and, and it was uh and how did you pitch the guys what was your pitch well i had to uh, uh get in touch with them like uh he had approached me and i hadn't seen anybody in the band in quite a while <clears throat> like years <laughs> And then, uh, so I had to get a hold of him. And at the time, uh, it was just Dove and Larry and I. We didn't have a lead guitarist per se, but we were chatting about it on Facebook. And Steve caught it, and uh, he used to be our guitar player on Too Dumb to Quit. So he said he'd be interested. And 
playing with us. So we got it together with uh, Dove Larry, Steve and I about nine years ago. And we did a show <clears throat> that 600 people came to. That was uh, a <laughs> our reunion, our reunion show. So it was, uh, we were kind of, we kind of got the idea that we should probably continue because <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. You want to do it if, if it's fun, if it's a, if it's a chore, you have to ask yourself, well, why am I doing this? Isn't this why I left in the first place? But what, yeah. but what had changed? What, do you, what did you change? What had changed in you guys? And what had changed in all of us out here? <clears throat> well, I think uh, the amount of time that had passed, like when at the actual reunion show, there was a lot of, uh, I don't know, high emotion going on. Uh, the, that's where we learned as a band, like our songs to the people who love our band a lot, uh, are more than just songs to them. You know, the whole cliche about the soundtrack of your life and things. Sure. Well, well that kind of feeling was very prevalent at our reunion show. And, uh, you know, none of us had thought about it for a couple of decades, but we were pretty moved by, uh, the response. And, uh, yeah, it just makes you want to do it more because, uh, with Junior Gone Wild back together, we didn't have to do the work of convincing people to like us. That was already happening. So our shows kind of would start at the beginning of the show instead of us trying to, you know, gather people into our space. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Of course. And so, uh, yeah, everybody is aware of what's going on immediately. So our show, we just skip the uh, introductions and go right to the, the meat of the situation is us playing songs and people liking them. Okay, I want to talk about, uh, strangely enough, i got to talk about this album cover in just a second, but first, because the album's called Still Got the Jacket. Jacket's the only part of, of this album cover that's fantastic. But let me play a track <laughs> so people understand where it is you are and how that, they, right. how that they can still recognize Junior Gone Wild. All right, let's pick a track. Let's pick um, uh, Dodge. Let's pick Dodge. Tell me about Dodge. Okay. Uh, Dodge is uh, Steve Lurie's song about... Uh... He says it's about a couple of guys who one night decided to take off to Mexico the next day, but they uh, chickened out by morning time. <laughs> 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 That's kind of basically what the song is about. Okay. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, let's get out of Dodge is the main line, and I believe everybody uh, has had that feeling one time or another. Yep, or used the phrase at one time or another. So, yeah. so let's get out of Dodge. This is Junior Gun Wild from Still Got the Jacket. Well, the bars are closed and there's no one around. Let's head south and blow the sleepy town. Drive all night and we drive all day. We'll chase the sun and we'll catch some race somewhere. Hey, let's go, let's get out of Dodge and 
That's Dodge Junior Gone Wild. Years later, Mike McDonald's on the line uh, doing an old school phoner for me. Um, and, and this a- album comes out when again, Michael? Uh, November 12th. And then you're going to have a big show somewhere on the, is it the 20th? Yeah, we're, uh, we're in Edmonton at the Starlight Room on November 20th. And uh, we're playing in the evening with uh, Forbidden Dimension from Calgary. Yep. But we're also doing an all-ages afternoon show with, uh, with Boots opening for us. Um, and that's for uh, people to bring their kids. And uh, we're going to do a little acoustic set and maybe a Q&A, let the kids bang on the drums, whatever. Kids sing along. Yeah. Got to watch your tunes. Um, didn't you get throw out, thrown out of the starlight a couple of times? Thrown out? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, isn't that part of the legend? Okay, fine. Uh, now, I want to ask you about the... I'm so excited to talk to you. Uh, I want to ask about the the album cover. I rarely, if ever, talk about album covers. But this one is... In, in, I, have you got it in front? Have you got the album in front of you? Uh, I can. Hang on. Give me a sec. Okay. I kind of... It's etched in my mind anyway. But I want to ta- I want to take you through top to bottom, Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. Um, first of all, who does who put who put the uh, photo together? Um, I I can I conceived everything, okay. and uh, our photographer friend Mark Shalafu helped me uh, Good. make it reality. Okay, top left hand corner. Wh- whose whose hat is that? Is that yours? The hat. Yeah. Yeah, that was a hat I used to wear in the too dumb to quit days. Okay. Uh, what's a t-shirt below it? The T-shirt underneath is our uh, our louder than fuck T-shirt that we uh, toured Europe. Well, wait a minute. No, that's just a. We used to have a. It's one of our older logos. Okay. Do you, do you have a vast sum of old T-shirts at the house? <laughs> Not a vast, vast, but we uh, <laughs> well, we got a few. <laughs> okay. Now then, you've got those cassette. Those are all your cassettes down below. Yeah, those are uh, the cassette versions of uh, most of our albums. And, and there's underneath, a, oh, and there's oh, a, but, you, the, but the, there's a hat peeking out. I think that's a Junior Gone Wild baseball cap. Okay, and then you got master tapes below that for two shelves, right? Those are the master, the actual master tapes from our Less Art More Pop album. Wonderful. Uh, tell me about the guitar. How old is that? What is it? Let's see. The guitar was bought for me. Uh, the, the first Junior Gone Wild bought it for me because I had a piece of junk guitar and they hated it. <laughs> and so they got me this Les Paul and I'm the one who put all the paint on it and stuff. But uh, it's it's so closely associated with the band. It's kind of part of our uh, uh, image, okay. I guess, the guitar. Are, are you going to so, uh, play Do you still play it? Oh, yeah. It's my main guitar. We will, will you be playing it at the kids show? Uh, probably, if not on my acoustic, but, uh, okay. it'll be there. <laughs> the reason why I ask is, is, is right where your elbow would be just after the bridge. There's a, there's a pink object there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, wait, it, am my eyes it, deceiving me or is. No, <laughs> it is what you think it, it is. It is what it is. Okay. But, okay. I got my roommate, Tim Folkman did most of that painting and, uh, uh, back when I was younger and uh, super idealistic about various things, uh, he threw a couple images in the in the painting that he knew would uh, um, kind of tease me a bit. <laughs> All right, well, at the kids' show, keep your elbow down, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> now, as for the jackets, who owns what, left or right? Oh, let's see here. Uh, first jacket is Doves. Yep, his leather fringe jacket. And then there is Quinton's. I think that's like a trench coat. Okay. And then there's my buckskin coat I used to wear all the time back in the day. It's beaten up. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's torn up and everything. It's. Uh, I wore it for the photo, but I don't think it would survive uh, like going out or anything like that. It's pretty threadbare. I keep it as a souvenir. And that Darth Vader and then, coat. And then I believe that's Steve's jacket. Okay. Right. Beside right. me. Okay, then uh, uh, the um, the uh, photo of uh, Mona Lisa with the throne. We uh, less art, more pop. On the cover is yeah. uh, Venus de Milo with Popeye arms. But okay. a, one of the ideas we had was uh, Mona Lisa with Jughead Jones crown. Yeah, and we actually made a T-shirt of that a long, long, long time ago. And this picture 
is a, a test run. We had a, some nice. scrap paper. We did a test run, and I thought it looked so cool. I put it in a frame and hung it in my house. <laughs> and, the, and the buddy uh, hockey sweater? That's from our Pull the Goalie album. Uh, we have a photo of a goalie walking down the road with a shotgun after shooting. Uh, we had a street sign made that said Junior Gone Wild, and the goalie, okay. the goalie um, shoots the sign. So. Uh, now, hold on a second. There's boots underneath that, right? Well-worn boots, obviously. Uh, what is the uh, flamethrowing uh, v- uh, piece of tube metal sticking out of the boot? That is, uh, we were in a pretty bad accident uh, outside of Jasper one time. And I remember uh, standing outside of the van. There was a couple of big rig trucks involved in this accident. And I was standing on the highway, <laughs> freezing to death. And I looked down at my feet and there was this uh, smashed up truck horn from one of the trucks. Wow. And so I picked it up and threw it in our van as a souvenir. Whew. As a reminder, uh, man, we almost died here. <laughs> And was that the license plate on your van? That the license plate is the li- our last license plate from our last van. Have mercy! It's all right there. That's fantastic. By the way, this was all just set up. Are we going to be able to recreate this maybe at the National Music Center? <laughs> well, it's somebody's actual kitchen, so we have to uh, yeah. cut out a maybe, of maybe not that room. Okay, Mike McDonald, Junior Gun Wild, uh, Mulligan Stew, and the podcast. So, th- these tunes are how old now? Are some of them like seven years old? Uh, <clears throat> most of them came up in the last eight years. Okay. A couple of them are older. Uh, well, we have three cover tunes for one thing. So, there's three that we none of us wrote. Uh, we do uh, uh, Him or Me, What's It Gonna Be by Paul Revere and the Raiders. Exactly. And we do Southern Cross by the Beat Farmers from San Diego. And we do Fly at Night by Canadian heroes Chilliwack. Now let's talk about Fly at Night because as you well know, okay. I mean, and you were pretty close to the original. You can't, I don't think that that's a song that you can mess around with unless you maybe you're a jazz artist or something. But I mean, <laughs> and you have a great relationship with Bill because he produced your album. Yeah, he produced Too Dumb to Quit. And uh, we'd been talking about doing this song even way back then. We just never got around to it till till recently. And, uh, but it, that's probably good because I think we kind of earned the right to do the song. Now. Like we kind of know what the song's about, like really, really know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have you done this More song? Than, have you done this song before in your sets? No, no, we just, uh, we did it for the album and we've been spending a couple months trying to do it properly live. <laughs> Is it a tough song? I think so. Well, the singing, right? Bill Henderson has got this, uh, falsetto that's, uh, amazing yeah. and uh and it's not the kind of thing you want to try to imitate because you just won't be able to that's, it, that's why i kind of sing the song my own way i was i tried to do it like bill but i, nah. I don't have his chops uh he has he's a pretty good guitar player too oh excellent and uh that's another thing uh we got a hold of him and we sent him uh the basic tracks and he put some uh, harmony guitar on with nice. it so steve Lurie and bill henderson are doing a little Harmony guitar duo at the end of the song, and I'm, I'm, so that was that was real special to have him uh, a say it's okay that we do the song and b actually play on it too. And the one thing you'll never be able to match the voice the voice you can work on the guitar playing you can work on you will never match Bill Henderson's hair. He has the best <clears> hair <throat> after years, the best head of hair <laughs> in all of Canadian music. Yeah, we were with him for quite a while in the studio, and he was never disheveled. Never. <laughs> never. We, we always were, but he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> this is Fly at Night, Junior Gone Wild, from this great new album, Still Got the Jacket. Four men in a rock and roll band Fly at night and in the morning we land Fly at night till we're satisfied See the morning from the other side and when you close your eyes Sleep comes fast When you fly the universe You need some rest You need some rest
rock and roll band Fly at night and in the morning we land Fly at night till we're satisfied See the morning from the other side Mike McDonald uh, from uh, Junior Gone Wild, Still Got the Jacket is the name of the album. It will be released on the 12th of November. There will, uh, we'll give you the dates one more time when they're actually playing and things. Um, I you, I know that you snuck some of this music into CKUA. Do you, do you see that you've made the top 30? Uh, yeah, we sort of saw something. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't looked at charts in so many years. I don't know if I understand what they mean anymore. <laughs> but it's not just also, a, it's just it's not a chart, Mike. It's the CKUA airplay. This is if you get uh, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of albums that come in every week. You you get in the top thirty. You're heading for number one. Well, <laughs> hopefully we get there. It's uh, exciting, you know. Uh, last time we made a record, there was no digital, no streaming, no internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like last, and so this is all. A lot of it is pretty new. Some occasionally, a couple moments, I've been overwhelmed by the fact that like anybody on the planet can get at this stuff anytime they want to. That that idea didn't exist last time we made a record. Hmm. Um, I, I've, I've been I'm seeing a lot of coverage on. Um alt country and the fact that in in 83 that's basically what you were doing and how it grew from there i mean there's now so many sub genres it's ridiculous but what you were doing Mm -hmm. was uh was in fact uh time stamping music that that just grew from from that point do you think that you got the proper credit for uh being at the starting line for alt country um, not really. I mean, uh, we get acknowledged, acknowledged that we were there first, I guess, but, but, uh, it's sort of frustrating to see other people run away and get successful with it. And we didn't. So one of the things on this record with their country stuff in particular was, uh, for me, for my end anyway, was trying to reclaim our <laughs> ownership of our part of all alt country or americana or whatever you want to call it because hmm. yeah and then uh, the, the what what they did with uh alt country all those bands sunvolt and etc uh i wasn't really into i thought that's not my idea of country punk or alternative country because my idea of it is what junior Crown wild does sure and you came from punk Sorry. you came from punk that's that's the worry how you got there yeah yeah, it's basically I'm a punk rocker who eventually decided, you know, I don't really hate my dad's records after all. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, listen, um, uh, have you listened to Art Bergman lately? <clears throat> I haven't had a, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't had a chance to check out his uh, oh, yeah. latest record, but, do, do but yourself, I have it. I haven't had it. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. Let me uh, let me go back to this alt country idea for a second. Let me sure. just let's do a yes no, uh, so we can go through a couple of names here. Uh, if these people are were or are still alt country music, you ready? Okay, Buddy Miller. Buddy Miller. Yep. Sure. Lucinda Williams. Yes. T Bone Burnett. Yes. Uh, Buffy Saint Marie. Ah, uh, different because she's uh, she's from the '60s and stuff, so she's like above yeah. the yeah. contemporary. Yeah, Steve Earle. Yeah, well, <laughs> he's sort of Buffy Saint Marie too because he's mm-hmm. sort of established his legend. You know, like he's he's not uh, 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 one of us peons. He's one of the yeah. one of the icons. <laughs> How about uh, Mary Goche? Uh more of a folk artist to me. It seems. Okay. How about uh, Leroy Stagger? Sure. Jason, the Alberta kid. Yep. Jason Isbell. Yes. Well, he's he's owning it right now, right? <laughs> Avet Brothers. Uh, yeah. Okay. Dolly Parton? 
Actually, I don't know who that is. Dolly you Parton. Got me. Dolly Parton. Oh, Dolly Parton. Yeah. Alternative? Dolly Parton? No. Okay. She's commercial country. Okay, fine. I uh, like her. I, I'm thinking She's about attitude. I was thinking more about attitude than anything. And finally... Oh, uh, well, Dolly, Yeah, she's, uh, she's a good humanitarian, yeah. but she's still, uh, she panders to the fucking okay. commercial right. thing totally. How about Corb Lund? I love Corb. He's a good friend. Good guy. Uh, he's, and his music and his poetry is fantastic. I, I, I'm really happy for his success. Let's give, let's give people an example of exactly what it is you do. Uh, how about uh, Girl in the Crowd, which I love the story behind it, if you can explain. Oh, well, uh, <clears throat> we're lucky. A couple of our fans are uh, uh, very talented professional photographers. So they take lots of pictures at our shows. And Richard Siemens, my friend, got this amazing photo of my wife. It was just a gorgeous picture. And, and uh, well, it, it resonated with me, right? <laughs> and uh, it inspired uh, the song Girl in the Crowd. I wanted to write a song about that picture. And... Uh, that's the story behind it. I mean, uh, the song has uh, elements in it uh, that have nothing to do with my wife, but uh, it, it all comes back to my wife, the song. Do you know what I mean? I'm sort of talking around her, and, and hopefully in the chorus. <laughs> in, in the chorus, I get to her, I guess. Yeah. So that's the single, Girl in the Crowd and the Other Side is Fly at Night. Well done. Still got the jacket name of the album, Junior Gone Wild. I'm going to play uh, Girl in the Crowd because I, I, lo I love it. This is, this, is my, this is my hit right here. This Thank is, you. This is Girl in the Crowd, Junior Gone Wild. Or obscure rituals or magic potions A bird in the 
The album is uh, being released uh, November 12. Did I get that right? Yep. And uh, and then you're going to do some dates again. Just remind people so they can get there. On November 20th, we'll be at the Starlight Room in Edmonton with Forbidden Dimension from Calgary and Boots and the Hoots from Calgary. And also, uh, if you're not in Edmonton, you can uh, you can buy a ticket to stream the show. They've got a professional uh, film crew that's going to be shooting it, and it's going to be uh, airing live on the internet. Okay, I've got room for one more track, uh, Mike. I have two choices, Behind the Wheel or Barricades. Which one do you want to do? Let's play Behind the Wheel. Barricades we had released as a single quite a few years ago. We re-recorded it for yep. the new album. Yep. So it's 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 seen some light of day already. So let's let's go with uh, Behind the Wheel, which is another uh, um, uh, excellent Steve Lurie song. Um, basically, the same that we can just assume that it's a driving song. Yeah, well, it's about uh, behind the wheel. Yeah, it's about it's about <laughs> driving in the winter on the highway, <laughs> which is never in fun. Various scenarios, which is never fun. Yes. Yeah, but this one, this one, this song it it doesn't talk about. Uh, the experience of driving in the snow it's talking about uh how you feel while driving through the highway on the snow you know what i mean <laughs> okay before i play behind the wheel i just want to wrap this up by doing a couple of things one is what was your anticipation uh okay you, you guys do this you you take seven years to get this album together you finally get it done it's wrapped it's locked it's loaded and then you sort of hand so you're going to start to hand off to us do you Give a shit what what we think of it. What kind of acceptance do you expect, and what are your expectations? We want. Here's the example. You know the English punk band The Damned. Yes. They put out a couple records. They made an impact on their scene, and then they broke up. And then they got back together again, and they made the Machine Gun Etiquette album, which in the punk world is is a sacred, amazing album. So they broke up and then got back together and made the best album they ever made. And that's what I'm hoping we did. We want our, still got the jacket. We want our fans to love it as much as they love less art, more pop. That's what our goal is. Are you ready to go back on the road? No. (laughs) (laughs) My back's not. (laughs) But we'll do what we got to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can budget a masseuse. Somebody, somebody... Uh, you got to work that back. You got to make that back stronger and take care of it. Yeah, I know you got to take care of it. Um, and it's a tough road that you guys wrote. If you can find a way to do it, maybe a, a gig every third night or something, somehow, some way, because you've settled into a nice life. Now you're going to go, uh, you know, people are going to want you to go back on the road and do festivals and things. C- can you make it work? Well, <clears throat> Back in the day, we used to drive across the country in a van. We, uh, in the last few years, got smarter about it and started flying. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier on the back. <laughs> and although, it, although dealing with airports is a, is a colossal drag. Does it feel like you've actually turned a corner? I think so. Like uh, We're not treated like a new band. We're, we get sort of... Uh, I don't know. I feel I feel like we get respected a bit more uh, automatically because of time served. <laughs> I w- frankly won't be happy until I see Junior Gone Wild perform at the Junos. <laughs> that would be something. Then, that would be a bucket list. <laughs> that would be a bucket list. But but with some some you know some alt country some punk people out there with you like a like a coming out party kind of thing. I'm looking forward to that. I'm not going to hold my breath on it because. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get it, B- but maybe they will. But things like that don't happen to Junior Gone Wild, so we, we're kind of destined to uh, bushwhack, <laughs> you know, cut, <laughs> cut the ground. Well done, well done. I'm going to leave with them behind the wheel. Um, way to go on this, you know, this journey, the whole journey, like the whole damn journey, but especially the last seven years. I'm so glad you're back. I'm so glad I can Thanks, play Dave. Junior Gone Wild. On uh, on CKUA, and if you guys uh, down the way, if you ever do a vinyl of this, if there's any plans for a vinyl a copy, that's the March one. March 2022. That's what I want to play on my show is the vinyl version of Junior Gone Wild. Okay, well, 
Well, because of the long lineups at the at the vinyl manufacturing plant, our our vinyl will be out in in March 2022. Thank you, Mike McDonald. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Junior Gone Wild. This is behind the wheel. Tell them the name again. Still got the jacket. Still got the jacket. This is Mulligan <laughs> Sue, CKU Way Radio. Thanks to Mike McDonald, Junior Gum Wild. I wish them well. I think they're going to have a great 2022. How about that? Nice guys do finish first. I played you Dodge, Behind the Wheel, Fly at Night, and Girl in the Crowd from Still Got the Jacket, Junior Gum Wild. See him if you can. Next week, Colin James, his new album, Open Road. And in two weeks' time, Miami, Steve Van Zant, a living legend is just going to fill this show with stories and quotes and music. This is Mulligan Stew, the podcast. You can subscribe on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. If you just subscribe, it will automatically come to you. Thank you. Happy Halloween.